I'm thrilled to have Isabel Fish on the show today. Born and raised in France, Isabel Fish is a Canadian entrepreneur with a long list of achievements. From a background in law, raising a family, opening up new markets for designers and makers, owning and running an exclusive contemporary jewelry gallery in Toronto, and most recently launching her business, Rue Pigal. So welcome, Isabel. Such a pleasure to have you here. I hope you're doing Thank well you today. Thank you very much. I am. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lovely day today. So as I mentioned in the opening, um, Isabel, this platform is really about inspiring women, you know, to take that next step in life um, and doing things that they've always kind of had in, inside of them and, and taking the next step. So to that end, I know that um, you have a great story of transformation and, um, you know, moving from lawyer to opening up your own boutique in Toronto. Can you tell us a little bit about your story and, you know, was there any really defining mo moments in your life that, you know, when you realized you really had to make a change and that, um, how did you make that leap, you know, from going to a lawyer to where you are right now? Sure. Um, I would say that uh, for me, it was a little bit uh, life pushing me in that direction. Mm -hmm. When we arrived in Canada, um, almost 20 years ago, um, I was, we arrived in Calgary and I was actually uh, not able to practice law. The Law Society of Alberta at the time did not recognize in me of my international degrees or my international experience. I had been practicing um, for about 15 years then. I had practiced in five countries and for, you know, um, corporatism reasons, I would say, uh, mm. they did not recognize my degree. So I took that opportunity to, um, uh, I always say, get to know my children. I had two, we had, we have two children, three, three children at the time too. And um, because the law practice had been very busy, mm -hmm. I didn't really have it, had a chance to know them. So I took, you know, time off and was yes. at home and met an amazing woman in Calgary, who um, was opening a little boutique of French accessories and a little bit of decor and vintage. Mm -hmm. And I helped her. Um, I was the, the Saturday girl, if you want. And uh, mm -hmm. suddenly that world of retail and art and makers opened itself to me. Uh, it was a true revelation. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward a couple of years, we moved from Calgary to Toronto. And I really, I knew I wanted to open my own gallery. Uh, my husband said, you know, let's just wait until we settle in Toronto. We meet people. We understand that we're going to stay here. Mm -hmm. um, we had been, you know, um, moving every three years for the past 15 years, um, you know, for different job assignments. So for us, it was quite new to make a decision to settle somewhere yes. for good. Yes. So be, before investing in a new business, he said, well, let's make sure that this is the right place. The right place, us. yeah. Um, so what I did is I uh, worked for a law firm as director of administration. Uh, it was a, a world I knew, but on the business side. And um, as much as I enjoyed it after two years, um, I was just done. It was, um, it just wasn't for me. Mm. And I so, so wanted to open my my business, mm -hmm. um, I can't quite explain it. There was that absolute burning um, mm -hmm. desire to create something um, mm -hmm. of my own, something right. that, that was mine. So, so I just took the leap and, yeah. and um, opened the gallery. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, I, when you were t saying, you're telling the story about when you met this, this woman in Calgary and, um, you know, it's, I always find it interesting when, uh, you know, life kind of things happen and either you can look at it as an opportunity or you can look at it as, oh my goodness, I could, they didn't renew my, you know, I couldn't get my uh, certification to practice law. So you, you could have gone the other way, but instead you to look at it as an opportunity to, to go into the arts. So that's, that's something that's quite unique. You know, a lot of people, if they're faced with obstacles, um, they don't know how to get over those obstacles or they don't know how to make the leap or how, you know, how to, how to overcome them. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure it was quite um, very different from you 
going from from the legal world to to the world of art and craft. So what are some of those obstacles that you know you you faced in the beginning and you know we all have external obstacles as well as internal limiting beliefs that stop us in our tracks right um can you maybe describe some of those um, obstacles that you had and how did you get over them sure um i think that uh well before we start with the obstacles i think yes. that i would like to say that i i had an amazing um uh, support element uh, in my husband, mm. who was incredibly supportive um, of me doing whatever I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I think when you start from a place where you have someone or, or a system that gives you the confidence to change, and who gives you the strength to face the obstacle, and you know, the support to mm -hmm. face the obstacle, that's a, that is something extraordinarily uh, important. And um, Absolutely. not yeah. everybody has that. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's really important for me to acknowledge that. Um, the main obstacle I had was a cultural obstacle. I come from a family of doctors and professors and academics. Mm -hmm. And I was raised um always with the idea of um entrepreneurship is a respectful um place in society but it's certainly not like being a doctor lawyer professor there was a, a very uh subtle but unmissable distinction that was made mm -hmm. and I remember when I was a kid, um, I was a, a teenager. My mother had a friend who had the most gorgeous boutique of home decor. And my dream was to work there and one day own that. I, I know that now at the time I couldn't quite articulate it. And, right. um, but, but I never dared saying it because I knew that my parents would look down on me and say, what, you want to own a store? So my first, <laughs> you know, my, my first obstacle was yeah. to uh, quieten those voices yes. and say, um, actually, you know, being an entrepreneur is amazing. Mm -hmm. And being one now and having faced the challenges of being an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are my heroes. Mm -hmm. Anybody who feeds his or her family from, you know, their work every day mm -hmm. is is incredibly brave and courageous and innovative and should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. um, so, and again, my husband helped me um, get over that obstacle by saying, uh, excuse me, but you are employing people. You are, you know, mm -hmm. you, you are quote unquote feeding families. That there is nothing to scoff about and mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. should take great pride in that so um that was really for me a way the main obstacle the second obstacle was to really believe in my business and believe in myself that i would i would make it mm -hmm. and you know i think that obstacle you it takes a while to um took me a while to get over it until the business was self-sufficient and um you mm -hmm. know I, I i saw that Yes, it was a um, sustainable business. Yes. You mm -hmm. said so many uh, important things there. The, the first one being that you, it's so important to have a support system and people to encourage you. Because if you don't, then um, it's so difficult to, to find the courage in yourself to go ahead and do it. And, and um, you were fortunate to have that. And I, I'm fortunate to have that as well in my, in my journey. So I, I completely agree with you. And the other thing that you said about the obstacle of your, um, I guess, traditional upbringing, which is also similar to mine, and um, being Indian, for example, you know, we were always taught that, you know, you should be a lawyer, a doctor, or accountant, you know, those traditional mm -hmm. um, fields. And it sounds like you had a similar, um, uh, you know, uh, upbringing. And um, and I, I love the fact that um, you overcame that. And that you, you know, you've, you've, 
even though you didn't realize as a child that it was, it wasn't so obvious as a child that, Oh my God, that's eventually what you were going to do. You ended up doing exactly that. So, and that, uh, you know, that, that again takes uh, talks to your courage. And you mentioned that um, believing in yourself. So what are some steps for people to actually, actually do that? Because it's, it's, it's difficult, right? Sometimes to, to get over that, like, Oh, I'm not good enough. Or, you know, I don't know, I've always done this, but now I'm, I'm going to be doing this. And how do you have that ability to believe in yourself? It may be a difficult question, but it's something that I've always thought about, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. And I think that um, it's an important question, Mm -hmm. um, whether you are an entrepreneur or um, any other activity you choose to to pursue Mm -hmm. um even as a mother believe in yourself you know (laughs) um it's to it's to learn to i think follow and trust your instinct for a start um it's also realizing um what the real risk is um you know and it's having someone who will reflect to you the so what okay, you, you're going to, you know, maybe fail, but so what? What are the exact real risks? Because often we create, you know, a mountain mm-hmm. out of nothing. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so it's, it's very important to have a sounding board. It's very important to have a support system. Um, and I would say that if you don't have that um, at home, as you and I uh, do in our partners, and then find someone, you know, outside who mm-hmm. can help you look for a mentor, look for a group, look for um, a, a network um, of, of women or men, or mixed, uh, whatever works for you. Mm-hmm. And trust, it's very important to find someone you trust mm-hmm. um, because then what they tell you, you know that it's the truth and you know that they will um, uh you know, tell you when it's a good idea, but also when it's a bad idea. Exactly. Um, so that's, I think that's how you um, build this, tr- this belief in yourself. Yes. And then experience. I think that learn, make your mistakes at someone else's business <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and learn, learn from someone with experience, yes. but then have, take the risk and, and try to find the courage to make your own mistakes mm-hmm. um, because there's, there's nothing other than making your own mistakes to exactly. gain confidence. Yes. Um, and just, and, and as just an entrepreneur, it, right? yeah, that's right. Just, yeah. just do it. Yeah. Um, as an entrepreneur, re- I think resilience is really the main uh, quality you mm-hmm. need to be able to get back up every single time because you're going to be stumbling and falling and crashing and if you don't get back on your feet mm-hmm. or get back on that horse um, you're just not entrepreneur material I think it's mm-hmm. just not for you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have the support that's... structure that perhaps you had in a corporate world or or you know, uh, in a previous work, uh, it's, it's, it's all you, right. It's, it's everything. You're, you're the one who built it and you're the one you have to answer to as well. So, um, that that's, uh, resilience is, is extremely important. I agree with you. So, so just, um, to, to ask you, was there ever a moment that you, um, maybe just wanted to give up or that, you know, you just, it was like, Oh, do I move on? Or there's, you know, you we were talking about resilience, but was there ever a time where it's like, oh my goodness, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Um, I I think there was in my entrepreneur journey, journey after uh, six years of having the, uh, the gallery Mm -hmm. where um, I was a little bit of a trailblazer. And I'd say that, um, with a lot of humility in the sense that I was bringing products that were extremely different from anything else you could find. And I was bringing 
um, jewelers and makers and artisans that nobody else had. So I really had to create the market. Mm -hmm. And that is exhausting. <laughs> um, and retail is exhausting. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that um, you know, I started this fairly late in, in my life. You just don't have the physical energy um, that you have when you are 25 or 30. Yes. So I, after six years, I, I was exhausted and I thought there was time to renew my lease. And, and, uh, and I just thought, I, I don't think I can carry on doing that. And do I really want to carry on doing that for, you know, I had to renew a lease for five years, which was huge. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't renew the lease. And for about a year after that, I, I wasn't sure. I mean, clients were calling and um, I, I just didn't know how to move the business forward. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one day I just invited 12 women for dinner. And mm -hmm. then suddenly <laughs> <laughs> the answer was right in front of me. <laughs> interesting. Um, yes. So interesting. It was, uh, so it was what, interesting. what was it about the dinner that like what happened there that you, the answer came to you. What was it? The connection well, with the women, or it was the connection with the women, but with the women among themselves. Mm -hmm. And I felt that great energy um, of all these women, and uh, the, the the desire for more connection, for learning, mm -hmm. for discovering uh, the makers, and and learning new things. Um, through the craft and the makers and you know um, it was almost an excuse um, to to learn to meet new people and then um, to travel that's really how uh, we you know I evolved the the gallery into a salon and a, a travel group um, and now a club mm. uh, tell us just, about the club so the club is uh, is for women who want to be patrons of crafts. Yes. Um, the reason why it's for women only is um, simplicity. I would say I think that it's very difficult to um, to create a space where you can satisfy um, uh, everybody's approach towards craft. So I decided to have um, the women stream towards craft. And um, I think that as women in our um, age range, which is about 45 and up, mm -hmm. we are very untapped in terms of knowledge, experience, capacity to get things done, uh, capacity to to bind to get something done and and to help each other and uh, um, and I find that extraordinary. Uh, so you're saying that, that we have more potential than we actually realize. Is that what you mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I am convinced of that. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced of that because so am I. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you know, we our work is done with our children and yes. um, our partners uh, need us, but possibly not as much. Our careers, wherever we are um, on the spectrum are, are, you know, mostly behind us. And, but we still have, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we can still think and do things and learn new things and do more things. And, and all that knowledge and energy is just not utilized. And that's exactly, I mean, you've hit it right on the nose, really, um, Isabella, is that this is exactly why I am so passionate about this, because as women in midlife, um, we don't give ourselves enough credit for all the things we've done and all the things we possess and all the talents that we have and how we can bring them out into the world. And and you said it so well, I mean, um, I, I, I want to go back to the those dinner meeting those dinners you had because I think what what we can learn from that is that you saw the opportunity and you know you were open to the possibilities and you saw oh this is something that people want why don't I address that need you know so you really listened to your customers firstly and mm -hmm. then you realized that 
wow, this connection that women have specifically in, in this age group uh, is something that um, I can fill that void and I can help with. So I think that lesson of really telling women or, or listen, you know, who are listening is like, you have the ability to do really, if you really listen to and open your eyes to the possibilities around you, there's so much that you can do, right? That's right. I think that's right. And, yeah. and I think also that we have to do it for ourselves because there are not a lot of avenues that capture um, that experience, that harness, that, that experience and, and energy and knowledge to achieve something. Um, so, you know, for me, it's, um, it's a two-way endeavor, mm -hmm. um, connecting with the women and hopefully giving them a space where they can learn and grow and connect with others, mm -hmm. but harnessing that energy to achieve something which is to um, support crafts and to support craftsmen, um, keep the, the world of crafts alive, because I really think that it's a very important element of a society that is human and connected, mm -hmm. uh, kind, and that's the kind of society I want to leave to my children. Yes, um, absolutely. So, so yeah. you know, I think it's it's interesting because what you're doing is somewhat similar to what I'm doing. Is that connecting connecting women together, and and for, in your case, for the purpose of uh, creativity. And I just wanted to ask you. This has popped into my head. Is that do you think we all have something creative inside of us? And like, do you think all of us have that creativity inside us? Is it just how do we get it out there, and how do we find it? Um, that's an interesting question. I think that we all have creativity, but it's not necessarily in, in making. Right. Um, you can be extremely creative in being a connector mm -hmm. and, you know, thinking laterally on who to connect to achieve a, a result that nobody had thought about. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think creativity is the ability to think outside the box. Yes. And we can all do that if we apply our mind to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I was surprised at the beginning when I moved into the yard at how many women lawyers mm -hmm. I was coming across who were jewelers, who were photographers, who were, and I, I just couldn't quite understand it. Mm. And in fact, I think that it's that, thinking outside the box, Yes. that creativity, if you, if you want to be a good lawyer, you need to obviously know the law, but be able to think outside the box to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And that creativity, you know, can mm -hmm. be applied to photography, writing, mm -hmm. fashion, mm -hmm. um, or law. <laughs> right. And I think, um, I think, especially for women in midlife, um, you know, what would you say, you know, if, if, if they're trying, if, you know, if, if you have somebody who is looking to do the next thing and maybe like you, like you always wanted to do the, go the art artist route, um, how maybe they don't even know what it is that they're really want to do. How do you, how does somebody go about finding that? What steps do they take to discover what, what they really are meant to do? I know well, it may not be like a step-by-step -step thing, but maybe some pointers as to how do I, how do I discover what I was really meant to do, <laughs> right? Well, um, if you are someone very analytic, uh, suppose you could start by, uh, by doing um, a, a, a test on what it is that interests you, or mm -hmm. there's lots of uh, those things. But mm -hmm. I think for me, I would, I would go and, you know, take a walk with myself and be very honest with myself and say, okay, you want to do beading? You were a CEO, what really interests you now is beadwork. Um, are you prepared to go and learn and go back to school and maybe have people who would say, you're doing what? Um, and, yes. <laughs> you know, um, not be faced by the possible judgments that yes. you are going to uh, face, not be faced by the fact that you're gonna be spending the next five years learning to do some bidding and that your work will probably be atrocious to start with. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I think yeah. it takes courage and first it takes great honesty with yourself. 
Mm-hmm. And after that, there's, I think once you are aligned with yourself, once your head and your heart are aligned, mm-hmm. you know, it gives you that self-assurance, that deep knowledge that you know what it is that you want to do. After that, it's just a matter of going on the internet and researching mm. whatever subject interests you. Mm-hmm. And, and there's enough resource there. Yes. But it's that be sure that you have your head and your heart aligned. That is so important. You know, um, listening to yourself, being with yourself, uh, asking those really tough questions. You know, that's and, right. You know, before you make take the leap, make sure that it's really uh, something that you're willing to to risk, I guess, in, in some ways, right? So, um, and that you are doing it for the right reasons for yes. yourself, not for any other reason. Right. Or, uh, doing it or not doing it, just be sure that you know it's the right reasons. Yes. Yes. So um, let me just go back to maybe your your journey a little bit. You know, uh, you started out and, and then you um, uh, made the club. Now, what would you say, you know, you really turned the corner where you knew that, okay, you know, I'm doing, I, I, it's like your high point and you, you would discover that, yep, this is really what I've meant to do and I'm, I've made it now. Was there a, a, a time then you thought, oh, okay, I'm so <laughs> glad I did this, <laughs> you know? Um, I think that it's more an incremental it's a question Mm. of for me um, I can't say that it was a a defining moment but there was a a growing sense of ease and a growing sense of being in the right place Mm -hmm. Um, um, I don't I'm not someone who believes in in the search of balance. I think it's a little waste of time to constantly look for balance. Uh, Just do it. And, (laughs) you know, (laughs) don't think about it too much. Um, Just uh, (laughs) when I said, um, yeah, but that's my personality. Yes. Um, So I think for me, it was more of an incremental thing, a a maturing uh, process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and sometimes you try things and it works and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have to learn to accept that. Mm-hmm. And there's a point where you, you do more and more of the right thing because mm-hmm. failure, is a, failure is the best education, right? That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm sure that, um, uh, you know, this last, this last year especially has been very difficult for many. Um, uh, have you had to adjust your business and how have you had to kind of pivot? And, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people who are listening have had to do the same in their lives with their, whether it's with their business or their career or, um, so what, is there any, uh, you know, uh, anything that you had to do, uh, to change your business? Well, my business, uh, disappeared in yes. a split second when lockdown happened. Okay. Well, that's a big, that's a big uh, problem. Right? It was a problem. Yes. It really was a problem. And I remember, um, uh, realizing it and I, I think my eyes must have looked like plates mm. um, all the trips canceled yes. all the events canceled everything canceled um, so I actually um, right away pivoted to the digital by organizing um, the weekly conversations mm. which are uh, live zoom conversations with artists and makers around the world Amazing. And I've been doing one every week since March 23rd. My first one was March 23rd. And it actually has been for me uh, an incredible business opportunity because it has enabled me to uh, be face to face with clients who some of them had been reading my newsletter, my weekly newsletter for years, but never came to the boutique because maybe they lived in New York or in Acapulco or wherever yes, yes. and, and had never met me. And all of a sudden I'm, you know, in mm. front of them every Wednesday. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And the way I ran the, um, I still run, I had, I did one uh, yesterday. These conversations is very much to have a dialogue also with the audience. So it's not a webinar um, it's a Zoom call. Everybody can see everybody. I encourage conversation and dialogue um, 
among themselves, but also with the artist. And that has, I have to say, been an incredible opportunity and the most rewarding thing I have ever done because I, I receive every week mm. emails and notes from the audience saying, these conversations have been for me, you know, the way to connect with others. They have uplifted my mood. They have enabled me mm. to go through these dark times. Um, uh, you know, we can't thank you enough. It's just so moving. And um, I can hear it in your so voice. I, I can hear, I, yeah, I can hear I, how excited you are. It's amazing. You know, uh, when you is. said that you, when you first uh, thought your business had died or, you know, it was the end of it. Now look at where you are and, Mm -hmm. It has, it has been a very interesting year because, you know, it, within all the despair, there's been so many great opportunities like you just described to really connect with people that you would never, ever have imagined connecting with, um, That's you know, right. worldwide. And, um, uh, the, the, the fact that you've, uh, reinvented, uh, that part of your business is, is incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, and yes, and on the strength of the conversations, then um, we offered the workshops, yes, uh, which which are live. So again, um, you know, creating another community of ten women who would be uh, doing embroidery together or um, collage. Um, we've got a, a lino printing workshop happening, and and the women who take the workshop together live with the artist. Um, come from all over and actually my challenge is to um, uh, to make sure that the time zone works yes uh, which is a wonderful problem to have <laughs> uh, and um, and then on the strength of that I launched the club um, in September again that community and that connection and that communication and um, I'm just about to launch uh, the virtual trips Again, a community, 10 Amazing. women, 20 Fantastic. women, actually, we're going to take 20 and, uh, and we're going to be virtually traveling, um, you know, to various countries and, uh, and do that. And all so that, you because... that, sorry, so you, you, is it like a, is it like a three day thing or is it you, you meet yeah. every day or okay. That's right. Oh. Um, we've got one in February, um, in partnership with the art fair collect. Mm -hmm. And uh, for four days, for about three hours a day, we're going to go to, um, you know, two galleries in London, and uh, mm -hmm. then we'll have probably a little cocktail session. And then the next day we're in Paris, and the day after that we're in Oslo, and then oh we're going to go to New York. <laughs> um, and there's, there's the, and it's all live. Yeah. So, and you will be with the same 20 women, uh, you know, for, for four days. Wow. Um, and then we're going to Italy in, um, in March. We have a second trip planned to go to uh, Venice, Florence, Milan wow. in March. So, so uh, do, you yeah. do you think this this uh, incredible, you know, how you've kind of turned lemon into lemonade, I would say, you know, mm -hmm. would you say that you would continue, um, you know, once we are actually able to physically travel, do you think you would continue even this arm of this business, like still having for people who maybe can't um, physically travel, maybe you yes. can still continue this um, uh, absolutely. You know, virtual travel. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. And we'll do, I really want to do a, a mix. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we travel live in real, we do have virtual connections with other women mm -hmm. and bring them with us if mm -hmm. you want for some of the events that's a great uh, idea so have these uh, have these mixed things no absolutely and you know i i can't let go of that community now um yesterday um we um we had the first uh conversation of 2021 and uh, i had been off air for about uh, five weeks and yes. I can't tell you, first, how happy I was to see them, but there was a, a mood of lightness and happiness. Uh, I, I know that it was also um, uh, Joe Biden's inauguration, yes. which did, did oh, add, yes. um, you know. Good day to choose. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but the women, you know, they found each other again on screen and they were talking and waving at each other. And, uh, so nice. and I encouraged them to do that. And, you and know, just that think, community. and just think you created that. 
You created that. So you I guess be, you're right. <laughs> you should be. I was going to ask you, what are you most proud of? But I, I would hazard to guess that might be it. Is it or? Yes, yes. That community of women and that that uh, connection mm -hmm. and um, that that sense of um, being there for each other and mm -hmm. and you know bringing that that happiness and that that uh, joie de vivre. Um, yes. You know. <laughs> once a week yeah. <laughs> at least <laughs> well you know um from just listening to you and your passion for what you do I, I I just wish that for for everybody like I really do because when you find something that you're passionate about it, it just doesn't seem like work you know it just seems like something that you're meant to do and 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 the tips that you've given us today to really find that and get over the obstacles that maybe are facing you and having the uh, courage to do it as well as having finding support if you don't have it already uh, those are so um, so so great lessons and um, that we can all learn from so mm. wonderful wonderful do you have any any other thoughts or anything you'd like to well I think add? what's important also is that for those of us who are lucky enough to have that that confidence and that courage mm -hmm. is that we are attuned to the fact that they they might be you know, people around us who don't have that and who might not be um, able to ask for it. Or So we must be open to providing us support. And it's a way of giving back, if you want, which is a very important concept for me too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and being there, yes. you know, and, and sharing, our, um, sharing our courage, sharing our self-confidence, our energy, our experience, uh, with others that's really really important to do that mm -hmm. and that's exactly uh, what we, you're doing today <laughs> right? well I guess so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's exactly what this well, is I'm, about <laughs> I'm, I'm delighted then <laughs> yes yes um, and that's such an important thing you know and I think people realize that more and more especially in this um, situation we're all facing with COVID is how can we you know not only help ourselves but how can we help others and that's, that's yes. such a great point. So um, yeah, thank absolutely. you so much. Let me let, tell us, tell our listeners, you know, um, how they can find you. And, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, the travel that you're going to be doing, but maybe you could give us a little uh, insight into that. And we'll have your information in our show notes so people can look out for you. But uh, maybe you can tell us how you can, how we can find you. Of course. Thank yeah. you very much for that. Um, so my, uh, my company is called Rupi Gal like the uh, Rupi Gal in Paris. And uh, there's a website, rupigal.ca. And um, I'm always available by email. It's isabel at rupigal.ca. And the trips um, we are doing virtually are also on the website. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody is welcome. Just send me an email and we'll, uh, we'll discuss that. Yeah. And I mean, I love traveling, so I miss it so much. So I, no. <laughs> even the thought of virtual traveling would be amazing. So I might check that out myself. <laughs> With pleasure. Yes. Well, thank you so, so much, Isabel. It was a pleasure to talk to you and, and hear your insights. And I hope everybody enjoyed that. Um, you know, and please reach out to Isabel if you have any any questions or if you want to see what uh, what great things she's doing with her community of women. Uh, it would be wonderful for you to connect with her. So thank you very much. I hope everybody enjoyed today's episode and we will see you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.